Once again, from Oxnard, California, Training Camp Live presented by American Airlines from the River Ridge Practice Fields. We've got Nick Eatman. I'm Kyle Yeomans. This is my first day of practice. But training time. Camp Live has helped give me a window back into what practices look like. It's good to be back, though. Yeah, it's about good time you back. got here. It's actually about time they put me on, so that's what happened. Thank <laughs> We're you. We're both on here this for the is first debut. time. Yeah. <laughs> debut for both of us. Let's take a look at some combo drills. This is the second team offense and what looks to be the second team defense. They're going to mix and match a couple of guys here. What are you looking for in a drill like this? No secondary, no wide receivers. This Lime. is all physicality in the trenches, right? Well, yeah, looking for these guys to get up off the ground after <laughs> a, a play like that. But really, for me, linebackers just being in the right spot. They're not supposed to be tackling, but you see, you know, the, the just you want to make sure your linebackers are where they need to be mm. at reading it, seeing it, and going and hit the hole. Here's the first team offensive line and the first team defensive line. Mozzie Smith, Osa Digizua, Tank Lawrence. Lawrence, Marshawn Nealand rotating in with the ones a bit as he goes up against the tight end. That is Peyton Hendershot all the way through. Nice job by Hendershot. Really I thought it was move. great. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big camp for him. Well, no doubt about it. And the fact that he's kind of slimmed down, looking more like a big receiver more than a tight end. So for him to do that, you know, and, and keep his leverage there and actually move Nealand, that was that was an impressive block. On to the second team. Offense, Cooper Beebe most notably snapping. He struggled a little bit with the shotgun snaps throughout the week, but here he's just going under center. Good job by the offensive line to clear a hole. It looked like there was enough room to work there. I'm telling you, I think the guy we're not talking about enough is Royce Freeman. I really believe that. That was him right there running the ball. But because he's a veteran guy that's been here, he's seen it, he's played, he's a big body. So it's going to be interesting when it all shakes out. But I, I think that he might have a spot here, uh, especially if he can you know, hit the hole like that. Again under center, this time they go to Davis. Looked like Viliami Fahoko was pushed out of the hole. That's Nathan Thomas, that's a rookie yep. in that left ta or left guard spot rather that pushed that hole forward and Viliami Fahoko was washed out of it there. Now, in a drill like this on the defensive side, is there anybody you want to see more from? Well, yeah, I mean, defensive tackles is a position that, that without a doubt is is everyone's been looking at here, you know, because even the starters are in question. So, you know, you see Fajoko there again, just kind of getting pushed around by, uh, well, let's go. That's one where I just don't think we're seeing them uh, hold their ground enough yeah. uh, there. And the, the offense has, has been winning the, these drills just because the running backs are clean going through. And it's tough because you can't have that true physicality at the running back position, but if you want to think there's importance behind these drills, Mike McCarthy isn't over with Dak Prescott and the wow. wide receivers. He's over here with the offensive line and the defensive line, keeping a close eye on what we're watching here. First team's right back into it. That was a better battle from the defensive line. I thought they did a better job of clogging the middle and forcing yeah. the running back out wide. Yeah, what a collision there. I don't know if you got to see it on that back end of Hunter Lipke. And uh, Maris Leofal, just, <laughs> just, I mean, fullback, linebacker. And, and, and Lipke's a guy that's really caught this team's eye. I know Jerry Jones has talked uh, favorably about him. And he was in the fullback position there. So uh, that's one where there's no tackling, but they're certainly doing some hitting. Lipke, of course, had some extra snaps last year. There's Damone Clark working inside. He plugged the hole quickly and was able to touch up Freeman for what looked to be a loss, or at least right yep. at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's the one thing I just said some good things about Freeman, but that's mm -hmm. one thing, the quickness to the line of scrimmage, that one, that burst, that, that's always going to be a problem for him. He's a big guy, looks like a defensive end. So that's going to be one where the, who, who can hit that hole quickest. He's Connor, I believe, the running back. Connor nice back cut. on, great job on the counter. Entire offensive line watched to their left. The defensive line followed suit. Looked like Mozzie Smith might have gotten yeah. caught up there and the entire right side really nice of cut. the hash yeah. mark was there. Put, put the foot in the ground and cut it back. Let's take a look at the defense here. Let's see who we should focus in on. I'm looking at some of these numbers along the way. Maybe we stick with the offense for now. This is now into the second team, maybe the third team between the two. It's a really good play there, 92. Nicely done by 92. That's one of the new additions new guys. on the roster. That might be Muhammad or, Is it Muhammad? or Tony. I, you know what? You got me on the new roster. No name on the back, so. Now we don't get the cheat sheet in terms of that just yet. Again, Thomas at the left guard spot. Awesome Richards at left tackle. Two guys that, of course, 
are young but still want to show out, and they did a good job there clogging up the hole. I really like these drills because yeah. without pads, you just don't get this. You don't get right. the physicality of it all. And when people ask you all the time how these guys look and who's looking good, and it's always receivers, corners, quarterbacks, because it's that's what you see. You, sure. know, you see that. But when you, the drills like this really get, get a chance to say, all right, who's blocking well? Who's getting moved off the ball? These linebackers are filling here. I think the linebackers as a whole – have done a great job so far. Eric Kendricks was a great addition. We haven't seen him much today or even in the first padded practice of the week. He's on the sideline. He's getting a day off here. But you've got guys like DeMarvin Overshone. Damone Clark is right. back at that will spot where he really does thrive and, yep. and fits in a little bit better than he did even last year once Leighton Vander Esch went down to injury. But then you've got a rotation now, it seems like, at linebacker that you did not have at the end of last year. Without a doubt. And the, the younger guys, too, the, you know, the, the guys they brought in, even this 59, Mogensen, uh, you know, he, he's played a lot of college football, too. So I just think from top to bottom, you're right, there is a lot more depth there at linebacker. So now we move into a mojo moment portion of practice. This is the first team offense versus the first team defense. Fourth and goal. And, of course, this is a goal line stand just inside the 10-yard line. Dak Prescott in the shotgun, Nick. This is just high-intensity game situations for the Mojo moment. We've seen it a couple times before, and it works out well. As Dak finds Jalen Brooks in the back of the end zone. Yeah, that's one of those things where you see Dak's ability to run the ball. You have to honor that, and he's going to look like, now he's probably not going to run in that type of drill, but still, <laughs> just froze him enough. Jalen Brooks, that's a couple times we've seen him make that catch in the back of the end zone like that. Yeah, he's been having a good camp, mostly on the boundary, so seeing him in between the hash marks in the back yeah. of the end zone there is another added element to his game. And he, if he can add a red zone element, no he, doubt. he'd have a shot at that third or fourth spot in terms of wide receivers might on be the, the roster. No, might be the number, but definitely some Terrence Williams vibes mm. there with the way he catches a ball over the middle. Okay, I like that. With his body. So this is a little <laughs> bit further up. This is from the seven-yard line. Cooper Rush in the second team offense now trying to score in the same scenario. Fourth and goal, have to have it. Rush pressured up the middle. That really just disrupted the entire play. There was nothing that Cooper Rush could do with that football. Eric Scott looked like he knew the play there. Like, it was like <laughs> he knew that was a slant. He wasn't going to let anything happen there. Uh, and, and, of course, you can't throw a pick there. So Cooper Rush did a nice job, at least just putting it in the ground. Yeah, Cooper looks like me trying to play that college football video game over the last couple of weeks. It really did, hasn't worked out offensively. Hasn't worked well? No, yet. no, still trying to learn the game, pick it up <laughs> along the way. All right, here's Dak. You got Turpin and Brooks out there as well. First team offensive line, including Chuma Adoga at left tackle. So Ferguson in there as well. He'll be in line to the left. A little check with me at the line of scrimmage. You like seeing that from Dak early Oh, yeah. On. He's the offense knows the playbook. Plenty of time to throw. Throws a dart. And Cavante Turpin holds on. Jordan Lewis was there. It was good coverage, right. but Turpin still found it. I thought maybe a little P.I. there. It was like it was a <laughs> piggyback right. Good job by Turpin, though. He's more than just a punt return, kick return guy. If he can make plays like that, and he did. He's done that last year. You've seen that. What I like, Kyle, is those running backs that are out in the flat. We've seen Zeke. We mm. saw Rico Daddle. That's going to give them flexibility to shift around there uh, if they don't if they like the coverage. You think that's an added element for McCarthy this year as I, a play caller? I think so. I just think it's kind of like a two tight end set where sometimes you can move them into block. Sometimes they can. it's just the more you can do with those guys. We got a whistle prior to this. John Wassel, or John Fossil wants to blow the whistle. Looks like a timeout from the offense. They didn't like what they saw there. And these are so fun because it's just pure competitive. One right. play, you either win it or you lose it. Right now, it's 1-1. Yeah. 2-1 two, uh, two in terms of the offense. Both offensive first team tries have gone their way. So 2-1 in favor of the offense. Keeps getting closer and closer to the line. Yep. Now at the three-yard line. It's Trey Lance. A little read. We'll play action. Easy money. Fant on the other side. He'll walk into the end zone. That's now 3-1 in favor of the offense. Defense nearly got there to the side, but I don't know if you're going to slow down number 48 rolling downhill like that. No, and it's, it's the RPO type there. You run in the football, and, and, and that's one thing that Lance really does well. It seems like that's that kind of offense that he's done uh, at North Dakota State. And he's really shown that RPO action, just like Dak. Dak can run it quite a bit as well. See what he does here on his third snap in this mojo moment. Again, great pocket for Dak to throw from. It does break down at the end, and he finds Malik Davis just past the goal line. 
Three tries for the first team offense, and they all go in favor. Yeah, and Chuma Idoga, there's been a lot of talk. Why even play him? Why not just go with Guyton? He did a good job of holding his ground right there on that one and let Dak have that opportunity to find Davis. All right, last portion here of Training Camp Live today, and we're going to work into some team drill. And just initial thoughts, Nick. This is your first Training Camp Live. It's mine as well. What have you been your looks in terms of – the first team offense so far? Well, I thought Dak has actually gotten better and better as camp started. He wasn't really that clean to start with, but the last couple of days he's really been, you know, having a lot more of a connection with those receivers. We saw it a couple of plays ago with Brandon Cooks here before we started this, this segment. See what he does here going under center initially. Hand off to Dowdle. Nothing really there. Good job defensive line wise. We talked about it a moment ago in terms of clogging the middle of the hole. We saw it in the Mojo moment as well. There's ways that this team can get better and it starts on the defensive line and in the middle of that defense yeah without a doubt i mean that's what really in every level of yeah, football it no started uh, you can't stop a run the the, the <laughs> we saw that in the buffalo game you can't stop the run they're going to just keep running on you let's look at look at micah buffalo parsons game. here at yeah, line, linebacker yep. well he was see but there's the versatility of it right. starts on the left side now he's back to the right side he's still at the second level and he works over to the will working in from the second level and Gets a touch on Ezekiel Elliott. So there's the ones, couple runs for you. And then now the ones will step aside for a moment. Big, big opportunity, 25. Uh, now Sean Wright walking off the field here. But, but you know, with Diggs still not working into reps right now. And Sean Wright, this is his fourth year. It's time. It's now or never for him. And he's getting that opportunity. He's getting challenged by guys like Kalen Carson, the oh, yeah. rookie draft pick, wearing the number 41. We'll talk about him. In a couple moments, hand off again from Rush to Malik Davis. Let's focus in on Kalen Carson a little bit. He's on the right side here. If we can pan over. I want to ISO in on him a little bit. I have an inkling that the offense is going to throw the football. And I want to just see how he covers here. As they move to the left side here. <laughs> yeah, flip back and forth, which is one thing to know. But then secondly, if he's going up against some of these receivers, he's going to have some success because he is a solid press corner. He is physical at the line of scrimmage. Let's see what they go with here. And he's going to back off the line of scrimmage. That looked like a broken play. It looked like Cooper Rush may have mishandled the snap a little bit and then just took off. Either that or that was a quick draw. Yeah. Yeah, a Car going back to Kalen Carson, I know they're talking about him him with the nickname the Seat Belt, Ooh. Um, which is a, is a nice – Nick, nickname, but the first play I saw, he gave up a touchdown mm. to Tyron Billy Johnson, just running right past him. So I call him like the '80s seatbelt. Back mm. when, if you're not old enough for that, but in the nope. '80s, sometimes you wore it, sometimes you didn't. <laughs> you know, you weren't always wearing it. It's more of a suggestion than anything. Right, right. Play action from oh, that's Trey Lance back behind. He dumps it off to the running back. That goes back to what you were talking about. Yep. In terms of running backs as receivers, we've seen a lot of that through camp. Yeah, without a doubt. And we saw it there at the goal line a, a few uh, plays ago. But, yeah, right there, just just Snoop Connor getting out of the backfield, you've got to have that. It doesn't have to be a screen. Mm -hmm. Just got to show the versatility there. That's what helped with those with those play actions. So back to the threes. Cooper Beebe snapping to Trey Lance. Play action. Lance, time to throw in the pocket. He's going to step up and deliver it underneath for a completion probably close to the first down marker kind of tough to see so now the ones are back up this will be our conclusion we'll have a couple of snaps from the starters and then we will wrap things up here on training camp live reminder if you haven't subscribed already to dallascowboys.com and also follow all the podcasts nick has cowboys storyline yeah, you we can do. listen to I saw y'all just came right in on talking cowboys yeah, today got to hopped in on talking cowboys as we could here's dak Play action from Dak. He wants the deep ball. I'm going to throw it near side for Cooks. Did he keep it off the ground? You think it touched the ground? Yeah, I do think it touched I the ground. I thought it did, too. I thought it snuck a little bit under. Nice job to even make it a question mark, though. Yeah. We'll leave that up to the viewers at home. You can have the slow-mo. We don't have the ability to do that. Dak did a one-on-one -on -one interview yesterday, and he was kind of asked to build the perfect player with the from strength, from IQ, from everything, toughness. And his IQ player he picked with Brandon Cooks. Okay. Just from a football IQ point. I can certainly see that. A little motion from Turp and a little sweep to Turp. He's been really getting involved with the offense. We saw him with that touchdown grab in the Mojo moment and yeah. some physicality 
Do you think this could be a breakout year for Turpin? I do. I think when, when they look at the running back position and who scares them, who, who gives them juice, that kind of stuff, I think they factor Turpin in a little bit. Not as a runner on third and one. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about another guy they can give the ball to in plays like that, get him out there in space. Possibly our last play. Maybe we'll sneak in one more here with the ones. Bland out there. Of course, haven't seen Trayvon Diggs yet. It is Nashawn Wright on the opposite side at corner. Dak on the bootleg out to his left. Found, guess who? Tyron Billy Johnson, who continues his nice camp. Yeah, what a just an effortless throw there for, for Dak. I mean, he's done it over and over in his career, rolling left. You, you're told not to do that, mm -hmm. mainly because most quarterbacks can't do that. But he did it with ease there. And just and, and also, not only a found the open receiver, but he never even broke stride. Really, really good play by Dak and Johnson to get open. And that's a harder throw than people might realize because he's a right-handed quarterback. Sure. His natural side would be rolling right. Instead, he's going to the opposite side. Now he has, with a hard count, he can see Lewis about to go in on the blitz out of that nickel. And he resets at the line of scrimmage. We'll see if Lewis actually goes here because he was going a second ago. Yeah. May not be doing it now. He's going to actually back out. Plenty of time. Dak likes what he look, or likes what he sees, but he didn't find anybody. Closest to that football was DeMarvey and Overshow. One still rolling here. And they want to try something again here. Third and 10 is what John Fossil just said as the scenario. I like that they have scenarios here. It's true practice, yeah. right? Oh, and look who they just subbed in at center. Oh, uh, Number 56, that's Cooper Beebe. He actually oh, he's at right guard. replaced Excuse me. Zach Martin. Yep. Saw him pop in. I thought he was going to play at the center position. <laughs> Dak again under center. Now he bootlegs out to his right. Deep ball to Tolbert, oh. but it's overthrown by just a hair. So that brings a conclusion here to Training Camp Live presented by American Airlines. Nick Eatman, Kyle Yeomans. Nick, what are your thoughts? Well, just a, a, another spirited practice. When the pads come on, totally different, different vibes. I thought the offense, the running backs looked pretty good. The, the, the interior of the offensive line seems like it kind of held its own in the stuff that we saw. Yeah, I really liked the the – it's again, it's a step forward yep. because it's going to continue to grow in intensity. Every practice, more of the playbook is available, more options are available, and I thought we saw that again today. Well, anything in practice is if you see something that's good here, it means it may not be good on the other end. So yeah. that's that's the life of a coach. You're always worried about one thing in versus the other. Now, if you like training camp live, we're going to have the entire practice tomorrow ready to roll. We got Bill Jones right there. If you want to pan real quick, we got Bill Jones. Bill Jones. He's going to be on that broadcast, DallasCowboys.com tomorrow. Really excited about that. We're going to rotate through some guys and give you a full look of practice. It's basically training camp live all the way through. We're going to have a whole lot of fun with it. But enjoyed having you today from the Dallas Cowboys social channels and at DallasCowboys.com. For Nick Eatman, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We'll see you next time.